Well, welcome everyone to the 27th episode of the Bamboo Lab podcast. I'm your host, Brian Bosley. And for the better part of the past 25 and a half years, I've had the most distinct pleasure of working alongside and coaching some of the world's top performers. And what we do here, as we do each week, is we're bringing those ideas and strategies directly to you, to your home, to your car, to your office, and to your earbuds. You ever feel at times that you're just underachieving in life and you just feel like you're that hamster and you're stuck on that damn hamster wheel and spinning and spinning and spinning? Do you know deep down that you've got so much more to offer? to yourself, to your loved ones, and to the world? Well, if so, you've landed in the right spot. This Bamboo Lab podcast was written, created, broadcast just for you, all you strivers, thrivers, and survivors out there. If you'd like to learn more about what we do here at the Bamboo Lab, more about my private performance consulting and coaching, my team coaching and development, and my corporate speaking, feel free to reach out to me directly at any time. My email is Brian, and that's Brian with an I, at Bamboo Lab 3. That's the number 3.com. Brian at Bamboo Lab 3.com. We've had some uh, great emails and text messages come through from prospects that want to work with us. So we'd love to work with as many as, of you as we can, see if we can help you get to that next level in life. I want to share with you where we are statistically right now. I think probably in the next few weeks we'll stop sharing these as we grow. But right now we are being broadcast and listened to and followed in 20 countries. 35 states and 443 cities around this great nation of ours. I'm not going to recognize three new listeners like I normally do today, but I am going to recognize all of you listeners out there from the Armed Forces of America, all those those who are serving and the families who have picked up the podcast primarily due to our guest last week, which was retired Colonel Marine Corps Colonel John Barnett. And we had so many new followers uh, in the Marines, Army, Navy, Coast Guard that are now following us because of and Air Force because of John. Thank you, Colonel, retired Colonel Marine, Marine Corps Colonel John Barnett. It was an honor to have you on as our guest. I'm going to read one heart letter today. And as all of you returning listeners know, our goal is our expectation and standard actually is to get collect 10,000 of these letters, emails, texts from people who have can share with us what the Bamboo Lab is meaning to them and what it's doing for them and their loved ones. And we have, we're in the hundreds now, so we're, we're climbing. We're not to the 10,000 mark yet. This one came through. It was very short. It came through last Tuesday, and it said, Today I'm going to eat an orange whole. The whole thing. Today I was really feeling alone. I feel so much better after listening to you and Gino talk. And that is referring to our guest at episode number 25, Gino Lechuga out of Colorado, and talking about how he takes care of his body, his mind, and his spirit with uh, a ruthless attitude, and grit and determination. This episode is episode 27, and I'm going to dedicate this to the United States of America as she celebrates her 246th birthday, the most amazing, the sexiest country in world history. Anybody listening from our country, I hope you're proud of where our country has come from and where it's going to. Happy birthday, United States. We love you. Let's dissect. All right. Back in the uh, late 1800s, I've shared this story once. There was a gentleman with the nickname Black Bart. And Black Bart was a stagecoach robber. And highly effective stagecoach robber. He would ride up on his horse, garnishing his guns and was extremely effective and and efficient to the point where many small communities shut down. Commerce shut down. Nobody would travel for fear of this monster they call Black Bart, the scourge of the earth, you know, the the hooded bandit uh, of the West. He had all kinds of just dark nicknames. People were deathly afraid of him. So people just didn't want to travel. And Wells Fargo finally figured out, because Wells Fargo was his primary target, They said, hey, we got to get this guy. He's hurting us. So they hired a team of mercenaries, and they hunted him down. And they did catch him. But here's the interesting, interesting part. What they thought they would find was this massive, scar faced cigar-smoking, whiskey-drinking killer with no heart. That's what they expected. They thought as soon as we take the mask off of him, get ready, because he's going to start shooting and killing He hardly even resisted them. They did find him. 
They caught him. And they tore the mask off of him, literally. They didn't find a massive, scar-faced, cigar-smoking, whiskey-drinking killer. They found a very short, skinny, ex-pharmacist poet. And this guy, even though he rode up on a horse, he was deathly afraid of horses. Even though he branded a, a, a gun, had a gun with him, he never shot his gun because he never loaded his gun because he was deathly afraid of guns. Black Bart, the scourge of the West, the hooded bandit, was nothing more than a small, skinny, ex-pharmacist poet who was deathly afraid of guns and horses. Most behavioral scientists and psychologists will agree that when we are born, we are born with two fears. The fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. So that's why a lot of times when you clap your hand or make a loud noise around babies, they jump. Or if you're holding a baby and you slip a little bit, they tense right up. I just received some pictures um, from my daughter, Ashley, with my little pal, Jack, um, at some parades yesterday. And they had earmuffs on them because the loud noises scare babies. So if we are born, we are born with those two fears, where'd the other ones come from? All of these fears that define our day-to-day existence, where'd they come from? I want you to do a, a good deep dive today and really think of those fears you have that are are keeping you from your peak levels in life. We all have them. So what I'm going to ask you to do, and I would highly recommend this exercise. This is an exercise I created several weeks ago. And before I really rolled it out to the majority of my client base, I tested it on myself first. And then I tested it on a very small group of clients with their permission to see if it really would have impact. And the impact has been overwhelming for me and for my clients who are now utilizing this weekly exercise. We call this entering the no fear zone. So here it is. I want you to think of that time of the week when you feel most vulnerable. Your anxiety is a little higher. You might feel a little weaker, a little more sad, a little scared. For the vast majority of us, it's either going to be Sunday nights or early Monday morning. The weekend is now behind us. Where we, The weekend, we have a lot more control. We're spending time with loved ones. And now you are entering the unknown, the work week, where you have less control. You don't know what's going to pop out. You're not spending the quality time throughout the week with your family and loved ones like you did on the weekend. Now, I have had one person say Fridays at 2 p.m. is their time. So everybody is different. But the vast, vast majority of us, it's going to be Sunday evenings or Monday morning. So if you don't know, what I would recommend is choose Monday mornings because that's where most people fall. And I'd like you to sit down for literally 60 seconds and ask yourself this one question. Now, the wording of this question is important. So I would recommend, if you can right now, please write it down. I'll repeat it a couple of times. If, if you can't because you're driving or working out or walking or running, when you get home or back to your office, please write this question down. Here it is. You ask yourself this. If I could eliminate all of my irrational fears for the next seven days, What would I do differently this week? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Get the latest insights from top mortgage pros on Mortgage Connects, a podcast by MGIC. We interview thought leaders from across the industry to share their wide-ranging expertise and candid views on critical market developments and current housing trends. Our guests reveal highly effective marketing and referral strategies, training tips and best practices, and what you can expect from the mortgage market in the future. Hear from experts like best-selling author Todd Duncan, U.S. Bank's Lenny McNeil, and Freddie Mac's Danny Gardner. Listen to Mortgage Connects on your favorite app or at MortgageConnects.com today.
if I could eliminate all of my irrational fears for the next seven days, what would I do differently this week? Now, prior to COVID, when I was doing more traveling and speaking in front of audiences or crowds, I would inevitably get someone in almost every situation where they'd raise their hand and say, well, I'd smoke a pack of cigarettes a day, or I would skydive all day long every day, or I'd drink a bottle of whiskey every day. And they would list all of these higher risk activities. And so I had to clarify, those are rational fears. If you did those things, you're going to die, get sick, or get hurt. What we're talking about here are the irrational fears. The fears that are embedded deep in your subconscious, in the right side of your brain. Because we all know that we we understand and can intellectualize not to do stupid things. We don't run down the middle of a freeway when we go for a jog. You know, we, 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 we tend to understand that there are cer- certain things that are definitely in need of fear. And we need to fear those things. But the vast majority, 95 to 99% of the fears that dictate your day are completely irrational. Completely irrational. They have no power other than the power you give them. Some very basic ones, and I've heard so many over the past few weeks from clients. Some of the basic ones that when we're maybe when you're younger, you and you're asking someone out on a date or raising your hand in class or challenging someone who's being an idiot or even challenging a thought or an idea from work that you don't think is going to work or asking for a raise, asking for a promotion, telling somebody how much you love them and care for them. All of those things take us out of our comfort zone, because we tend to live in what I call the fear sphere. It's really our comfort zone, and it keeps us held and locked in there, and we are held captive by our own irrational fears. You see, the, when you make a decision in life, every decision you've ever made in the history of your life has been made first in the right side of the brain. The right brain processes all decisions first. And the right brain is not exactly the most qualified part of the brain. It's the subconscious. It's where emotions lie, where the fear lies. And then what happens is that right side of the brain, then it shoots the decision over to the left side of the brain, the left side being the logical side. And it shoots them over from the right side to the left side through a bundle of nerve fibers called corpus callosum just a bunch of nerve fibers and it shoots it over there. And then the left side of the brain can then make a rational decision. However, because our right side of our brain is so much more powerful and so subconscious, it's extremely difficult for the right side of the brain, the subconscious to, or I'm sorry, for the left side, the the conscious brain to change the mind of the right side or subconscious brain. And so quite often, you're, you know intellectually that you can, in the left side of the brain will tell you there's no fear in asking that person out on a date. There's no harm that can come. Yeah, you might feel a little embarrassed or rejected if he or she says no, but that's it. That, then your life goes on. But the subconscious brain, which first makes that decision, is holding so tightly to that fear. Because we don't want to get out of our comfort zone. Our comfort zone wants job security, and it fights consistently and with diligence to hold you there. It takes incredible strength and courage and grit, or as Katya Panzar would say, Sisu, to get you to make those choices that you know are going to take you to the next level, even when your comfort zone is screaming no. So when you ask yourself that question, on that Sunday evening or that Monday morning, I want you to write down the first three things that come up. Please don't think about it. Feel it. Remember, these are not locked in the conscious brain. They're locked in the subconscious brain. So they're emotions. Sometimes we have a hard time. Sometimes I have to, I, I've a couple of times over the past few weeks, I've struggled. And then what I do, the simple exercise that works is I ask myself the question and then I say, First one, one, two, three, write it. And I say, second one, one, two, three, write it. Third one, one, two, three, write it. And whatever comes out, 
I write down. Because more than likely, that subconscious fear has been locked in there, and you have to just feel it out, not think it out. And whatever you write down, you do those things this week. You get out of that sphere of fear, and you get into the no fear zone. You do those things. Regardless, under no circumstances do you let one of them slip. You do all three of those. You make it your number one priority. What happens over the course of our lives is when we have these subconscious fears, let's say, to not, I, I don't want to raise my hand in class. It's a, an irrational fear. But when you have it, and every time you fail to overcome it by keeping your hand down, what happens in your subconscious brain is that fear gains more power and you lose more power. What we're doing here is we're flipping the switch. So every time you conquer those three irrational subconscious fears during the week, you are telling your subcon your intellectual left side of your brain is telling that subconscious right side of your brain, wait a minute, these fears aren't real. And your subconscious brain will start to believe it. Now, sometimes you might not be able to come up with three. If you've done the one, two, three, right, one, and you then put one or two down, that's perfectly fine. But whatever you put down, you conquer. I'll share with mine a couple of weeks ago, from a couple of weeks ago. When I did the exercise uh, two weeks ago tomorrow, so uh, whatever that date was, I asked myself the question, and boom, I wrote the first thing down. The first thing was to share with Kelly how much I understand that my lack of planning has had an adverse effect in our relationship. Kelly's a planner, very structured, very plans out far in advance. I'm extremely spontaneous. I didn't even know I was going to Grand Rapids, Michigan last week to shoot a couple of podcasts until 30 minutes before I pulled out and left. I know that I need to get that under control. So it's a focus. But that was the first thing. The second thing that came to me right away was, you see, I've had my, my five-year business and personal plan in my head for six months now. I knew I had in my head exactly how much money my fee for service would be per hour next year, how many clients I was going to work with, what I was going to earn, how much I'm going to invest, what I'm going to buy, where I'm going to, uh, not, not where I'm going to live necessarily yet, but... Um, I knew my personal plan for my personal life. And so the second one came to me quickly. Write it down. Put it on an Excel spreadsheet and send it out to five people who can hold you accountable. And then the third one came to me, which was a really odd one. And it was simple. Tell mom how much I love, appreciate, and respect her. Now, my mom and I talk two or three, four times a week. We FaceTime. We text all throughout the week. And we always, almost always end it with an I love you. But to actually stop in the middle of a sentence and say, Mom, I really, I want you to know I really love, appreciate, and respect you. Now, people might say, well, how is that a fear? I don't know. It just came out. And so I wrote it down and did it. So by Tuesday, of clock, Tuesday at 2 o'clock of that, that day, of that week, I had accomplished all three of those things. And what was interesting is when I was actually typing up the Excel spreadsheet for my five-year plan, in writing out the standards that I have to live by to reach the, that five-year plan, I realized why I was afraid of that one. Because in my head, these plans are just wishes. On paper, they're now a plan and goals. And then when you share them with five people, now they are expectations. They're out there. I think that week was probably the week they had the most impact on me. And I know Kelly felt better just because she now knows that I realize that my lack of planning and my over spontaneity at times is not always good. I know my mom feels better. And she might not even have caught that in, my, in, our, in our phone call we had that I said that to her. And I know right now with my plan in place, there's not a chance in hell I won't reach those expectations I set. What are yours? I'm going to share with you some that I've heard over the past 
few weeks, one person was afraid to go to Costco. One person was afraid to be intimate with their spouse. One person was afraid of not rolling on the sides of his feet. Rather than walking flat, more flat footed, he tended to roll on the side of his feet because he felt it made him more ta- look taller and more cre- with more credibility. I've heard people say so many times, go work out, run, go for a run or a bike ride. They were afraid that perhaps people were going to laugh at them because they have gained a little weight since the last time they worked out. Whatever you fear, feel at that moment, write it down and do it. Now, I will share with you, there are times I've heard over the past few weeks that one person, when I asked them the question, said, build my, my house, build my dream house. And that came out so quickly, I knew it was a subconscious fear. Now, we know we're not going to build a house in a week, but I said, okay, what can you do this week toward that? Every week, you do one thing toward getting that house done. It may take months or a couple of years, but every day, every week, you are accomplishing and conquering a little bit of that fear. Now, also, you, you, when you're working on the three fears that you're overcoming for the week, you're in that no fear zone on, for the week. During the week, you might come up with other ones that you feel. Write them down. Write them down. Capture them on paper. Because the beauty is, is we can't always fight our subconscious fears with just our subconscious brain. We have to pull, we have to use the, the conscious brain. We have to use it to pull out the fears of the subconscious brain. And we do that by actually asking ourselves that question. And that gives, it pulls it out of the subconscious and then the conscious brain collects it, holds it there on paper. And then you do that. And what you're going to find is I'm just now finding it now in me and a couple of my clients who started the process right when I did are noticing after a few weeks that now your subconscious brain is starting to realize that these fears are not real. They are completely irrational. And therefore, throughout the course of the week, you just, you'll just you start just conquering the, these fears subconsciously. It just becomes habit. You'll start doing things that you've never done before. You'll start becoming much more courageous, more adventurous. You'll be trying new things. And your life will completely change. When is your moment in the week you feel most vulnerable? Your vulnerable time. When that time, whatever that time is, you sit down and you do that every week at the same time. And you ask yourself that question. And you ask yourself the question out loud. You want to help. You want your your ears to hear your mouth say it. If I could eliminate all of my irrational fears for the next seven days, What would I do differently this week? And then you do them. Because this goes back to an episode we did in the past called Choose Your Pain. And we only have two types of choices when it comes to pain in life. And if we try to continue to run away from pain and hardship, it's going to be a dogged pursuer. We can't eliminate pain. All we can do is choose the pain that we will accept. And there are really only two choices. The pain of change and growth in coming out of our comfort zones or the pain of regret. And this is the perfect exercise for you to use to every week in three areas. Find a way to choose the pain of change and growth and hard work encourage so that later on you will never experience in those areas the pain of regret your black bart is living inside of you you have a black bart you have thousands and thousands and thousands of black barts inside of you and your subconscious brain is trying to convince you that that black bart is a big huge, massive, cigar smoke and whiskey drink and scar face killer. Because it wants you to stay in that comfort zone. It wants you to remain in your fear, your sphere of fear. And what you're doing with this exercise is you take the conscious part of your brain and it hires those mercenaries and then you go out and you 
conquer and you, or you go out and you capture your black Barts three a week and you pull the mask off of each one of them. I will guarantee when you do, you're going to find that all of them are not massive cigar smoking killers. They are simply going to be mild mannered, small statured, ex pharmacist poets who are deathly afraid of guns and horses. This is your time. This is your week. Live in the no fear zone. It's refreshing. It's exhilarating. And damn it, I'll tell you, man, there's no better place to live. As we wrap up episode number 27 of the Bamboo Lab podcast, I just want to again thank all of you listeners, you returning listeners and you new listeners. Please get out there and follow us on Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Please follow, subscribe to the channel. Rate us one through five. Please continue with those letters that are coming and those emails and those texts. I love to read them. They make my day. And please go out and send this episode to three people you love. All right, Bamboo Pack, as we sign off, just know that I love you all and I appreciate you all. Get out there and sculpt your lives.